E75. Not a very well kept secret that this is a good tank. It may be a little bit opaque to people how good it actually is. So here I am on this Canada map, whatever it's called, with a Major M Major who is also in his E75. Uh, thing is, his E75 is a special needs E75, whereas mine is a proper prime specimen of E75. He does not have these uh, radar listening bulbs on the side of his turret. Now then, we go to the eastern position, we see that there is an IS-8 and he is the first to ding me. We are conscious that artillery will probably be looking for us. We are also confident in the fact that we've got some seven tanks on the western flank and we've got tank destroyers on our rear so our plan is very simple lure the enemy out in front of us and see them get blown to smithereens. So we're going to play it cagey. Major and I decided we will play it cagey, we will not risk ourselves, we will conserve our health and then once the tank destroyers have done their thing as they're doing there and you notice the whistling sound of the shells flying over us once they've done that we'll go in. Oh but in the meantime we can just uh, shoot an E75 in the face. Now I did use for a brief while Gnome Father's sound mod on f and uh, both for the engines and for the guns. I can highly recommend that for the audio effects. It sounds incredibly good. I mean the shell wine from artillery is fantastic. The, the hit sounds and everything is brilliant. Unfortunately it lagged out my game so I took it off again so we're stuck with the uh, tinny standard sound effect from engines and guns and hit sounds which is a bit of a shame so Major has taken the forward position these guys clearly don't want to play ball and come out into the open that keeps them perma spotted I however who do not have a special needs turret will be sitting in the back for quite a while and the ISA is shooting at the tank destroyers I reckon the tank destroyers at this distance should be able to outperform any tank shooting at that range. Um, yeah, well, Assumption is the mother of and you know. Still playing at KG. I say, I mean, I could try and shoot his weak spot on top of the turret, but then I don't want to give him time to aim at my weak spot on top of my turret because it's a lot bigger than his. Yeah, what's that? An IS of some description, let's shoot him in the face. So damage racked up now is just cresting the 1000 mark. Not impressive. The Major has probably done a bit more than me. But it doesn't matter. We are holding up, and, and it, this, this is where I take a look at the, the, the map right, and we're holding up what, half the enemy with five tanks. So it's a seven on five or so over here. And on the west flank, our 7 on 5 has now turned into a 4 on 2, 4 on 3, 4 on 4. Okay, well, it's not disastrous. It should be, it should be okay. Um, one enemy tank, maybe two will survive that, I reckon. And then we can go and clean that up in the end, and the artillery will be supporting. So it's fine. All is well. All we need to do over here is just slowly grind them down. I mean, we've got two tank stores behind us, we're sat here in a cosy position, we've got tea and biscuits, what more could you wish for? There is an AT-15 trying to get through, but seriously? I mean, that Chiri could just roll up on the side of him and eat him, right? So, yeah, the west flank, they seem to die a lot, but actually they do die a lot. So at this point, Joel and I, or Major and I, we are thinking, huh. Is three to nine. Someone has done something wrong. Who came up with this plan? And we think, okay, let's go balls to walls. Now is the time for us to get aggressive. We need to clean up this flank and run back to cap because, you know, it's now bad. Major unfortunately takes a, a, a rather precarious position. You notice I just angle my arm a little bit and, and 
stuff things off it and there it goes so let's talk about the armor on this thing you wriggle your front and your turret and you're a wall of death and steel and your gun oh is very common to hit over 500 with that gun and we ding another one you see how i wriggle the front I make him shoot where i want him to shoot i make him spend more time re-aiming i repair the track pop one into his lower plate and he's gone he did not angle his armor he chose poorly artillery shells okay i didn't expect that uh g34 to hit me or to penetrate me there. but anyway that's Amarak, that IS-8, who's been annoying my flank the whole game. Now for the G-34. Look at this shot. What were you thinking? I'm angled like I don't know what. And, uh, boom. Now, I don't have a reload advantage really in this one. His is uh, around 13 seconds, and mine is about the same. So, let's see if we can make him... And that was, that was my spider sense tinkling. I just noticed the AT-15 behind me on the minimap. So I rolled forward just in time. But I did not realize that there was a Rommel Bommel. Okay, so Rommel Bommel's taking a shot. He's good. What's he doing? Is he not looking at the minimap? Why is he doing that? Yeah, you have not gotten depression, mate. And that, my dear friends, is how you bully a Rheinmetall Borsig Waffenträger. And at this point, it's a 14 to 10, so I'm pretty confident that I can take on the rest of the team. My armor has held up very, very nicely, and I'm like, come at me, bro. I could take on the rest of the team, and I might even win this. Unfortunately, that was not to be. There is only this AT-15 who valiantly attacks me, uh, but... yeah. I mean, you're one big weak spot on the front, so let's use it. Let's have a look at the stats. And the attentive reader will notice 2,000 worth of assist damage, 5,500 worth of damage, a W8 rating of 10,508 for this battle, which was sorely needed because I'd been doing really poorly all day. And you will also notice, beyond demolitionist steel wall, high caliber, and all sorts of other stuff, an ace tanker badge for a defeat. That is interesting. So, I think this is what you can call a heartbreak. Enjoy your weekend and see you soon.